Thomas here of Much Props gonna give you another how-to video. Today we are once again building something for my Plague Doctor costume. Um, I have built a mask, I have built a lantern, and I have built a cyborg arm. Today we are going to do something that will attach to part of the jacket that I'll be wearing, uh, which is a cybernetic spine. Um, it's pretty simple. It sounds real complicated, but there's not really a lot of construction to it other than just layering up some foam. So today we will build a cyborg spine for my Plague Doctor cosplay. Let's get to building. Now I don't do this often, but sometimes I sketch out my ideas to help think out how things would be layered. I will include this in the template as a reference on how to layer the parts. Hopefully it makes sense to you. My thoughts for the design was something simple that could cover the broad area of my back. Cut out the template and trace it onto your materials. Decided to make the vertebrae template all one piece. Then as you work your way down, you cut off a chunk. And if you fold it in half as you do this and cut it, you keep it perfectly symmetrical. To limit the amount of cleanup work, always work with a sharp blade. It also helps your edges if you try and move along an edge in one smooth pool. The top vertebrae will house an EL coiled up inside the circle and the hub for four other wires. So I decided to make it stand out from the others and give me enough space to navigate wires in. Nothing too complicated, just layered down some contact cement and stack the overlays on top of the base.
the smaller vertebrae are a little simpler. I have a long torso and a broad back, so my cyborg spine is relatively wide and long. It is 10 inches at its widest point and stretches about 22 inches long. So you may want to size it smaller if you try and make this yourself, or you could remove one of the vertebrae to adjust the size. Here I am taking an 18 millimeter EVA dowel and sanding a strip of it flat so that I can glue it onto the spine. I cut them into one inch segments and use my wood burner to burn a hole straight through them. This part will act as a bracket to hold the EL wire as it goes down the spine. I just use super glue to attach these parts. Of course I have to incorporate some more applesauce lids into this to tie together other aspects of the costume. I glue them into place and then make a weld bead around the edge with hot glue. I also added some rounded details on the top spine to house the EL wires that will run up to the mask. Keeping with the color scheme, the paint job is super simple. Plasti dip for a ceiling coat, then gold spray paint for the base layer. After that had set for a while, I then taped off the overlay panel to paint red. Using the same Hobart face shield replacement visor that I used for the lenses on the mask to cover the middle circle. I put some translucent foam behind it to diffuse the EL wire and I used hot glue to put it into place. Super glue leaves a cloudy haze on this plastic and contact cement just peels off.
To attach the spine to the jacket, I decided to cut leather strips and add snap buttons. I bought a kit of them on Amazon, I'll link them in the description below, and then just followed the simple instructions that came with the kit. I also used the same leather stripping to connect the vertebrae down the middle. I also bought some multi-connected EL wire packs on Amazon. Two wires will string down the spine with some of the aquarium tubing I have used on the other parts of the Plague Doctor costume. One wire gets coiled into the center of the vertebrae and the other two will connect the spine to the forehead of the mask. I could have strung it through all as one piece, but my holes weren't quite big enough for the aquarium tubing. I also didn't want to mess up the paint job I already had down. And the EL wire is kind of difficult to get through long sections of the tubing without some type of lubricant or repeated force to get it strung through. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, extremely pleased with the way this cosplay is turning out. It is definitely one of my first attempts at a personal custom cosplay, uh, and I think it's really getting exciting for me at least. I started getting all the parts that I've ordered to come in, like a trench coat and a hoodie and pants and boots and all that stuff, and it's going to start to come together. So in the next build for this series, I'm probably going to work on detailing the trench coat and adding a few detail parts to some of the clothes that I'll be wearing with it. Uh, and then maybe there will be one or two more builds after that, and it should be complete. Um, I do really like that it snaps on. I thought if I'm going to put it onto the coat, I probably need to make it detachable so that if I need to wash the coat or whatever, but just trying to think ahead, you know, big brain. But these little deals that are on the end, I'm kind of thinking that they will um, attach to the mask. So I'll probably have to do an update on that and add some magnets to the back of this and then to the mask itself, which is sitting over there. Uh, but yeah. Maybe you will try and make this spine yourself and impress your friends with your ability to make uh, super cool shiny stuff that goes on trench coats. I, I don't think that skill translates very well. Yeah.
Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them. Much props. Of course it has to light up, so maybe if I get real close you can see it real good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah.